concept is the Eastern concept of practicing non-judgment. Um, that's my way of putting into a positive light the phrase don't judge it, which is something I seem to yell at students over and over and over again on bootcamp. Like, don't judge it, don't judge it, stop judging it. Just, it is what it is, it's neither good nor bad, don't judge it, okay? That's super, super, super important to realize. I got this idea from a book that I read that was called The Myth of Stress. It's a pretty interesting book. Basically, the premise of the book is that everything that stresses us out in life essentially comes from our use of the word should because we're either saying that um, we should be at a certain place in our lives and we're not and that stresses us out because we feel that lack or maybe we had something before and we don't have it now and we're thinking we should still have it and so that stresses us out. Um, whereas if we're just like, this is the situation right now and you don't judge it as being either good or bad, how can it stress you out? If you're not, if you're not assigning values to a situation, if you're not assigning it as good or bad, how can you really get negative or positive about it or positive for that matter but especially how can you really get negative how can you stress out about it all you can do is look at the facts of the moment and make the best decision and that's really the best way to live life I'll give you kind of a hypothetical example if i were to give you five dollars and let you hold it for a few minutes and then i would say no now i need that back when i take the five dollars back from you you're going to feel a negative emotion over losing that five dollars you're going to feel negative about giving it back to me you're going to feel a loss you might even feel stressed about it. if it's a bigger amount of money if it's like five hundred dollars you might really feel stressed about it because you thought you had it you're planning what you're going to do with it and now you lost it now you're like oh shit, i had it i should still have it and it's going to affect you. it's going to give you a negative emotion whereas if i had never given you that money in the first place it wouldn't be an issue for you that it'd just be a flat emotion there wouldn't be any stress to speak of Okay, so stop judging. And that's true for a particular set, that's true for a night, that's true for where you're at in pickup, that's true for where you're at in life, right? A lot of times if you're thinking you're unentitled to a girl, it's because you're judging yourself. And guess what? You probably judge yourself more harshly than anybody else on the planet does because you know all your flaws. All those things that, that you hide from everybody else, you know them about yourself. And uh, if you think about that everybody else is that way, think how pathetic and like messed up they all must be if you really want to take it that far. But uh, neither here nor there, because that's judging them. Don't even worry about that. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be better than them. All you have to be is good enough, right? As, as Alex says, you are enough. That's all it is. It's not, it's not I am the best. It's you are enough. And that's enough. That's it, okay? So, and even if you weren't, even if you weren't entitled, even if you weren't of a certain level to get something, you know what? In that moment, if you just do the best you can, that's all that can be asked. That's all that can be asked, right? So focus on the now and get rid of the word should. A method for, that's suggested again in that book for getting over stress is to whenever you think the word should or shouldn't and it's stressing you out, to reverse it. Okay, so if you're thinking, I should have a better job, instead of thinking that, you should think, no, in reality, I should not have a better job because I've done a certain amount of education, I've put in this amount of, this amount of work at the job, I've um, spent a lot of my free time doing things that didn't advance my career. Um, I've slacked off in certain ways. I'm young, I'm not that senior yet, whatever it is. There's a variety of reasons that you are where you are. Where you've gotten to is a result of your past action and therefore is exactly where you should be at this moment. Now, does that mean you should be content and satisfied and not strive for more? Absolutely not, absolutely not. But what it does mean is you should realize that your past actions have gotten you where you are. If you wanna get somewhere else, you need to change those actions. You need to step up and do something new and that you need to do it from a proactive way, looking at the world as it is now, not as you believed that it should be, okay? That's it. Um, another example, um, some girl shouldn't have left me. Well, actually, in reality, she probably should have, based on you know whatever you brought to the relationship, based on whatever mistakes you may have made, based on whatever experience you did or didn't have, based on also her life experience, right? It's not always all about you, but the fact of the matter is, based on the facts of the world, probably there were some reasons for it, and that's okay. And what we can do if we t get rid of this is, number one, we can say, okay, look, I'm in this situation, I don't have her. Um, there was a time before when I didn't have her and that was okay and I will be okay again with this situation. So it's totally fine. And now proactively, how can we look at what those mistakes are? How can we learn from them? And how can we move on? And so this philosophy of saying that the world is as it is, that's it. That's basically the whole philosophy. The world is as it is. Okay, now in a more specific sense, you get rid of the shoulds and the should nots and you accept reality 
as it is without judgment, okay? Do not judge it. Don't judge yourself, don't judge your sets, don't judge your life. Just do the best you can, moment to moment. That's all any of us can do. That is all. Hey, what's up? This is Todd with Real Social Dynamics. And for today's video, I want, you, I want to start you off with something that I tweeted a while ago, um, which was, don't get even, get laid which is an interesting concept because it brings up the idea of winning the battle and losing the war, which is what I think a lot of guys do in game and also in their lives. A uh, great example of this I see over and over again on bootcamp is guys trying to make girls comply to random things that don't even have anything to do with their overall outcome. For example, like a guy will try and shake hands with a girl, try and introduce himself and shake hands, and the girl doesn't shake hands with him. A guy will get very like angry and try and force the girl to shake hands, try and force her to go down that particular route. The fact of the matter is the handshake isn't that important. It's just one of many, many things that can occur in the wide range of experiences that can lead to a good relationship. But because the guy has his ego hurt or because the guy has had success going down that particular path before, he's now attached to that outcome. He's now attached to it going that exact way. A funny example of this that I see is, um, I'll see you with the, the handshake spin. A lot of guys will try and do the spin because it's a really cute kind of nice nifty little thing you can do at the start of a set. But uh, a lot of times the girl's not compliant to that and you'll see the guy like literally trying to like force the girl to turn around. That's just stupid, that's just stupid. If she doesn't want to, you just step back, chill out, relax, rinse, repeat, try something else again. And by the way, it's try something else. That's a very, very key point. Whenever you're trying to get someone to agree to something, whether it be in game, in sales, in life, if someone says no, that's fine. No doesn't mean necessarily no forever. It doesn't mean no to everything. It just means no to that one specific thing that you asked. And so um, you can always ask again, but you should ask again in a different way on different information. If someone says, no, I don't want to have lunch with you, you don't say, no, 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 lunch will be good, lunch will be good. No, you step back, chill out, get them in a good mood, and then you say, hey, let's go grab a drink. Let's go see a movie, something like that, right? You don't ask for the same thing that you just got a no to. You try again for something different and in a different way, okay? So be flexible in your approach. Also be flexible in what you define as a success, right? It may be that, um, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of girls will sleep with you but won't kiss you. That's a big mind fuck for a lot of guys. A lot of guys, they try and kiss, try and kiss, the guy, girl won't kiss, but she will sleep with you. So you just have to push past that and try something else, right? But if you got caught up on that, got hung up on that, you'd be trying so hard to win the battle, you'd probably lose the battle anyway. But even if you did win, it's so awkward, you probably won't get anywhere with it. You probably will, will hinder your overall effort. So be flexible about what you consider to be success and failure. Be flexible about the process by which you get to the end result. Keep in mind that that's what matters is the end, not what goes on in the process.